Hey guys, I decided to put together another retro fair video as I had so much fun making the last one. And in this one I want to show you how I got EGA on my CGA monitor. But as before I only have 5 minutes so let's get this show on the road. So in this video I want to talk a little bit more about the IBM 5150 PC. When this machine was launched in 1981 it had two different graphics card options. There was the MDA, or monochrome display adapter, and there was the CGA the colour graphics adapter. Now, as you can see, both of these cards use an ISA connector or industry standard architecture. Although when the machine was launched, it wasn't actually known as ISA. Uh, that was a name that was retroactively given to it as clone manufacturers started to produce hardware that was compatible with the same standard. Um, and it's one of the reasons why the IBM PC went on to become the standard that led to uh, modern computers that we still use today, of course. Now, most of the people buying these computers when they were new were businesses who wanted to use them for spreadsheets and word processing and that kind of thing. Uh, so they went for the MDA, the monochrome display adapter, which would usually be coupled with a 5151 uh, green screen monochrome monitor. The MDA was not only the cheaper option because it only had 4K of RAM on board, uh, but also had a built-in parallel printer port, which was quite useful as far as businesses were concerned. My 5150 here obviously originally belonged to a business when it was new because it had some business-oriented uh, hardware in it, and also because it had the MDA installed. Now, I wanted to mainly use it for DOS gaming, so of course I upgraded it to CGA pretty much immediately. Now, this video is a bit too short to go into the intricacies of CGA, but basically it allows the computer to display up to four colours at a time from one of four different predefined palettes, uh, from a total palette of 16 colours. Now, the reason the CGA card can do this is because it has four times as much VRAM as the MDA, a whole 16K. Most early colour PC games used the cyan and magenta colour palette and basically ended up looking like this. Now, I'm sure this evokes a great feeling of nostalgia amongst a certain group of people, uh, but compared to even the Atari 8-bits and the Commodore 64s that were around at the time, I think you'll agree it's pretty garish. Now, I don't have a great deal of time in this video to go into detail about how CGA graphics actually worked, uh, but I'll link a video up above by the 8-bit guy, which is really interesting and informative, and uh, if you're interested, definitely check that one out. I grew up in the VGA era. In fact, my first computer was an early 486. Now, I don't think VGA would be an appropriate choice for this machine because I think it's a bit too new. But ever since I've had it, I have been on the lookout for an EGA upgrade, which as far as I was concerned would involve getting the very expensive 5154 EGA monitor and of course getting one shipped over from the US, which would cost a small fortune. You see, EGA, or Enhanced Graphics Adapter, was yet another video standard developed by IBM. And thanks to its onboard 64K of video memory, meant that it could display all 16 colours at the same time. It could also substitute any of those 16 colours from a full palette of 64 colours, which of course made it a massive improvement over CGA. I'd pretty much given up hope of running anything other than CGA on this machine, but I discovered something quite interesting recently, so I thought I'd give it a try. It turns out that the IBM EGA card has a trick up its sleeve. Graphics modes 0DH and 0EH, or 13 and 14, actually ran at a resolution and a refresh rate that the 5153 CGA monitor could display. It also turns out that that's what most EGA games were actually written to use. So using these EGA modes on a CGA monitor, it's just a case of toggling a few jumpers on the back of the card and away you go. Of course, I don't use this machine for any real work. It's all about gaming. So I thought I'd show some gameplay comparison videos. As you may have seen in my other retro fair video, which I'll link below, I've also overclocked this PC with this interesting DIY overclocking solution. Now this combined with the EGA graphics card makes it absolutely ideal for gaming and they're definitely two very worthwhile upgrades. So there you go, it turns out you don't need an expensive and rare EGA monitor to experience what EGA has to offer. You just need a CGA monitor and an EGA card that's capable of outputting to it. Now as I said, the IBM EGA card offers this functionality. Uh, as do many third-party cards that were available at the time. But not all EGA cards can do this, so if you're looking to set something like this up, please do your research first and make sure that it definitely can. Anyway, we're just about out of time now, so I'll add some links to the description box down below just with some further information. I'll also link to my other Retro Fair video on overclocking the IBM PC and of course the rest of the Retro Fair playlist. I'm working on a series of videos with this computer where I upgrade and enhance it in various ways, so definitely keep an eye out for those. Finally, I just want to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Retrofair. I know I certainly will.